and uh, here we are. And Tony, <laughs> what's up, man? Uh, too much uh, stuff. I'm going to try to reset myself and be with you now. <laughs> cool, man. Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out. Of course, the same to you. Absolutely. Where are you located? I'm in the south of Sweden, Scandinavia. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I always hear good things about how Sweden rolls and how they do things. Well, you know, it's uh, it's hard for me to disagree. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're a very extreme country. If you look at certain axes of, of kind of polarities and so on, for instance, uh, the whole idea of religion is almost gone, almost gone here. You know, so it's kind of very secular society. Okay. Every time people talk about um, even Christianity, which is kind of the basis of us, we, we just kind of shrug our shoulders and say, "Yeah, okay, fine." Yeah, right. Yeah, That's so interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. we think that we are uh, kind of in the middle of the road, but but sometimes we're not. Yeah, yeah. Well, before we get into your life and and some of these other things and kind of peel back the layers, what I'd like to do is get into what we lived through for the last three years with COVID. How did you get through that time period, and how has it changed the way that you do things now? I wrote a book about virtual meetings with a friend in 2016. That was a lifesaver. It wasn't very popular at the time. But as soon as the shit hit the fan, and people started to look around and realize that I knew things, at least a little bit more than what they did. So I was super busy after three empty months in the calendar. Uh, I've been more busy than ever. So so for me, that was uh, that was good. It wasn't a lifesaver. I was doing fine. But, but compared to having no gigs, no, that's what I mean. If, if, the, if everything yeah. was gone, which it was for about three months, than than ever, ever, ever from then I've been just more and more busy so I was blessed with having written that book how about so, you well yeah I mean it, it was really about you know I have a couple kids at home we get out we do drives and just things were busy I have a jazz radio show and you know I was kind of a part of an essential worker crew I'm, I'm an IT guy for a school district so everything kept moving you know and I think yeah. that was the name of the game just stay in there keep moving we're going to get out of it and just you know that's it just be optimistic yeah we had this kind of soft lockdown where where it wasn't imposed to us but recommended yeah so it was a bit easier perhaps than in some countries even though everyone started to work from home and so on so for me basically being part of the industry of traveling and conferences and so on i just decided to go all in on digital so now i have a five screens or something like that right now and so so it's kind of yeah i built up my 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 studio my office into to something better so i can deliver pretty good quality anyway where are you located by the way i'm i'm in kansas city missouri right in the middle of america all right, all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. let's get to the essence of exactly what you do i'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day okay one of them looks up at you and says hey what do you do for a living how do you answer that child do you know if you want to talk to somebody and you want to get along with them? That's what I do. I make people get along with each other. So I think that would be the shortest answer possible. <laughs> yeah, right. No, and I get that. And and as somebody that's helping other people, how did this happen? Talk to me a little bit about where you were born and raised and what these seeds that were planted in you, how did they become who you are today? I am a second generation immigrant. My name is not Swedish at all. So my parents came from from Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, different times. So and and they met in Sweden. I was conceived immediately almost, and, and here I am. So so I come from a working class immigrant type of of uh, background, where nobody had any higher education whatsoever. Uh, I also realized quickly that I have no uh, desire or interest or even skills to assemble or repair anything. So I needed to be good at something else. And I found early on, like after the first or second year in school, when I was attending, this is, I just remember this because I talked about this yesterday at the, at the virtual keynote. Um, so we had this parent, uh, you know, parent teacher type of meeting and students, uh, you know, hundred people, the principal talked. And nobody asked any questions. Any questions? No, nobody dared to ask any questions. So I raised my hand, eight years old, so seven years old, and, and asked a question and asked another question. And I realized that I was taken seriously. 
you know, I yeah. got some good response. I, I can we can follow up, talk a bit more. And I think that, you know, if you talk about pivotal moments, that was probably one of them. Realizing early on that I can have an impact here. We, I can build relationship. I can I can make my voice heard, but I can also listen to the answer and so on. So I, I, it might have been one of those things that if you have a neck for something or a talent or a curiosity or something, a positive reinforcement, you build on that and you build on it and you build on it. So for me, that was kind of my way of... of, of keep going you know i've been working in sales and marketing again because i don't know how to, to repair anything so i need to be good at something else which was i guess communication with that said i i've made more mistakes than most people have even considered you know because of that's how it is you know it's like I, i'm no i'm no michael jordan but i love his expression saying that he has missed the basket more times than most people have even tried yeah there's something there, but again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Michael Jordan, but there are a couple of things that have happened along the way that kind of reinforced my, my identity of, of being able to inspire, build relationships, serve. I think that's an a important word for me. Uh, yeah. The whole kind of idea about generosity and serving and serving a higher cost than myself. It's interesting because kids always feel invisible. So that must have been a pivotal moment for you to be taken seriously. I mean, to have that kind of jump start early on is huge. Yeah, the fact that I remember it. I, I mean, I forgot about forgot about that for like decades, but it came to me when I was preparing a speech uh, the other day. That was uh, one of those moments. I have another moment that I sometimes talk about as well, and that is when I was held at gunpoint and I was 24. Wow. And people wanted to have my wallet. And I said, no. And they said, uh, well, the story is always a bit longer, but, you know, they, they brought out the gun, you know, are you sure about that? And I said, no. So they got my wallet, but then I got my wallet back. Nice. <laughs> because I had such good answers to their questions. Very strange situation. Yeah. I was a bit, uh, I was a bit drunk at the time, but when I came home, I kind of sobered up quickly and realized that I could have been dead at that time. Yeah. And what was it that made me come out of this situation with everything intact? Wow. And I think that's also a pivotal moment for me. You know, being almost obsessed or at least very passionate about finding those clues and insights and so on to how we how we get along, how we communicate, and yeah. how that leads to the right type of motivation and engagement, and how that leads to performance and results. That is what I speak about and talk about all the time. That link. Yeah, that's heavy. So, who's been kind of a role model for you in your life? Ah, uh, many people. Um, you know, uh, some, some soccer players, <laughs> since I was really interested in that. <laughs> some pop stars, I guess. Um, if, if I look at, uh, now here's one answer that I normally don't talk about. And that is that my, my mother has been a, one of those because, and this sounds almost cheesy, but she came to Sweden when she was 16 years old. She didn't want to. She wanted to go to high school. No money left from the family. They just sent her to Sweden. Um, having nothing, you know, getting pregnant with me at 17, you know, and still being able to have that drive of getting herself an education uh, later on in life and uh, always striving for something, you know, being, being better, you know, having a better life and so on for, for her and for us and so on. And seeing that kind of resent, relentless, relentless, sorry, kind of drive is probably one of those things that from that perspective has been a, has been a role model to me but then i've you know I'm, i've met some some fantastic people uh, along the way when it comes to teachers that i have uh, been been able to learn from uh, it has been james in england mike uh, sorry uh, uh, james from england uh, uh, john from england um one of my head teachers in, in economics from sweden i don't even know his name but what he said made an impact on me about being curious also in the Life, things like that so i would guess that those people are, are role models i get inspired by many people i think simon sinek is really good at explaining what he wants in, in, in a very clear message for instance if we talk about my world of, of, of speakers and, and, and so on yeah yeah well and you have a lot of people that want to come to hear you and to be a part of your world who is it out there who would be the one person you would love to meet on the planet right now 
and spent some time with. I uh, wouldn't mind uh, having a meeting with Michelle and Barack Obama. That would be pretty cool. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. Um, what? Yeah. yeah. So what what is the ultimate motivator for you to be who you are? You're obviously helping people. You're doing a lot of great work. What is it that ultimately every day is the gas in your tank that gets you going? Well, there's two things to that one. One is that I that I enjoy. I mean, that's three things probably. Probably one one part is my ego. I, I love to to see lights shining in people's eyes, and, and 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 I can see that kind of appreciation and all that. That's pretty cool. Um, the other one is that um, I want to help consciously good companies and people who care for other people who care for the planet to succeed that is really important for me because what i i in, in myself is not i'm not i'm not important i mean i what i do is hopefully helping those who are who save lives who plant trees who who come up with a new cure who who, who do good things you know who make sure that we electrify instead of having fossil fuels and all that if i can help those companies and people then then i'm i'm doing my part uh, yeah. that is it's probably really important for me. That that's the one thing that drives me the most. And you just have, as I say, I just want people to get along. If we can do that, that's good. I have uh, serious uh, doubts when it comes to our future. Sometimes looking at what Putin is doing in Ukraine, looking at how everybody is just caring for themselves instead of realizing that we have one vessel, one planet. Yeah. I'm not uh, an expert in sustainability, but I realize the importance of it, so to say. Uh, that drives me. Perhaps more than anything, you know, can I do something, something to help those companies? If you're a tobacco company, don't come to me. I have no interest in helping you. Yeah. What's been one of the most important or seminal success stories you've been involved with? It could be pretty small things sometimes. For instance, uh, helping a general manager before going uh, up on a in a panel discussion at the, in in. Uh, in uh, Japan uh, and and uh, getting feedback afterwards that thanks to our cooperation, he was able to express himself in such a clear way that everybody referred to him afterwards. That that That's really cool because he's, again, in the life-saving business. So if we can do something good, hey, we all benefit. Uh, and altruism doesn't have to be suffering. I mean, I can be happy also as well while, while that happens. Um, giving people ideas that they perhaps haven't thought about or strengthen them in, in some of their beliefs is also pretty cool to, to see. I remember not really, not too long ago, I, I was helping a real estate company who have tenants, you know, and, and uh, getting that mail back or something saying that, you know, you know what, our tenants like us more now because we ask more questions and, and we are interested in them instead of just running over them with something. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. So, if you were to have a dream tonight, run into the 20 year old version of yourself and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the life you've led, the wisdom you've gained over this journey, what would you tell your young version? Keep educating yourself. Uh, skip work for a while, go back to school, do more. Uh, focus even more on uh, sustainability issues as well. So you can uh, be an expert in that area as well. Uh, but ultimately, keep going with your idea about uh, about helping people. And uh, take song singing lessons and guitar <laughs> lessons. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I do. So what are you the proudest of that you've done in your life up to this point? Uh, I like your questions. I would say uh, realizing that uh, my now wife was the right person for me and uh, you know persuading her after one year of just having to talk having talked back and forth to uh, why well, she was actually interested in me but then she gave up but the fact that I made her rethink that giving up uh, was probably one of those things I'm really proud of uh, business wise I remember changing in whole a whole sales organization when the when the president said or the the, the, the 
managing director said, now we're going to change the process of how we define our customers. And everyone says, yeah, okay, fine. And I said, I'm not sure that that is a good idea. And after one hour debate, uh, they all changed their mind. So uh, they went my way. Now, I'm not sure, Joe, if, if my way was the right one. But the fact that I could persuade them to do it uh, with yeah. clear arguments and so on was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but afterwards, I would say uh, I, we, we perhaps should have done it the other way. So I don't know. But yeah, that was uh, another one. I'm not going to say my kids because uh, the, the effort of creating kids is not that hard. So, right. you know, I'm very proud of them. Yeah. But it's it's that's another story. So as somebody that reveres the word and is a speaker, if you could catch a speech in the history of humanity firsthand live, what speech would you have loved to have seen? Uh, no, many. Uh, I would have loved to hear Buddha um, talk to his disciples at any time. Jesus, same thing. Yeah. Or one of Muhammad. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I would have loved to see um, both Stalin and Hitler, just to, to 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 see what happens. You know. Yeah. Uh, Mandela, definitely. Gandhi. Uh, so many. You know, I can talk about you know, big names that we all know about. And um, that would be. Pretty awesome to 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 be part of that uh, historical sessions. I would love to have been in, on the uh, listen to the radio when when Churchill talk about how we would fight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So, as somebody that fixes the workplace in the history of business, what's been one of the, your best? What what's been one that one of the success stories that you've liked the most? I mean, you got Amazon, you got Apple, you got all of these different companies. What model? rose to the top that's been the most impressive to you right now i think that patagonia is one of them you know the outdoor clothing company yeah. who decided that uh, the owner is the world the yeah. planet is the owner i think that is such a such an interesting way of of, uh, of 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 viewing your your responsibility back into that kind of sustainable thing uh, but also, there are a number of, of, of studies showing, you know, great place to work type of organizations that shows that some companies have a, a much higher score than others. So I would say any company that understands the importance of treating people with passion and compassion and respect yeah. is, is a good company. And I don't include, for instance, the way Elon Musk have ordered people back to the office in his very unsensitive, rude way. You can make people perform really well for a while by, by making them afraid. But the, the, the steam will run out pretty quickly. Um, so any, anyone who understands, because I'm, I mean, yeah, financially, of course, you have a lot of companies in the US, for instance, who have done, who, who kind of go, go into the stratosphere level, the big five. Of course, uh, doesn't mean that I necessarily like what I see all the time when it comes to how they treat their personnel. Yeah, there are examples of of some some who have done it extremely well. I, I read about this story about Paul O'Neill, who changed who turned the Aluminum Company of America from red to to black by just focusing on employee safety. Pretty cool story. Yeah, uh, but I also. Uh, looked into a French CEO who decided to get rid of 22,000 people or was it 25,000 people uh, out of 150,000 by bullying them out of the company, by making them quit by themselves because that was be better from a union perspective. And uh, it turned out that I think it was 35 people who actually left by committing suicide so, because it was such a toxic environment. Uh, I, I want less of them and more of the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're the kind of guy that dispenses a lot of good advice to people. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? Myself? Yeah. I th I, I, th I th uh, oh, again, there, there are many, but one of them is that, and that was a head teacher in economics. He said that uh, there comes a time for many people, especially when they reach adulthood, that they don't they don't want to have gray zones anymore. They, they want to have black and white, yes or no, right or wrong. They can't deal with the uncertainties of the world. And then you have 
other people who decides that that is how the world works. And in that world, they are instead curious about how to develop, how to add, how to contribute. And he said, you are those people because you study in when you're adults, not when you're young. Um, and I took that to heart, um, probably strengthened my belief that you never quite finished, you never learned. You know, some people get wise by with age, but they don't lose out on curiosity. I don't think Dalai Lama is, uh, has lost out on his curiosity. I think he's still very yeah. curious. Yeah, I'd agree with that for sure. So everyone out there has a perception of you. You have all these pockets of people, those that hear you, family, friends, that are a part of your business model. But you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I know too much about myself compared to the rest of uh, the world. So I know all my flaws and, and so on. I would say that if I look at it from the outside, people will say that here's a guy with good energy, positive energy, good smile, who uh, is very clear in his message has concrete tips to give you when it comes to his area. Uh, I would also say that they would probably say that I'm a good friend. I hope so. Yeah. Um, I myself would say that I am a person who believes I have come somewhat not, not uh, somewhere on my road, on my journey, but I have so much left, so much still to to discover and and learn. And it's really hard for me to call myself a master at any age. I, I, I don't think I ever will be. Even though I, I spend more time than most really focusing on things like psychology and communication. I even call, I mean, the title is a workplace communication expert, but is there really such a thing? Yeah. So I, I don't necessarily consider, consider myself wise yet. Yeah. But I would like to be wise in the future. Absolutely. Well, you sound wise to me, man. Let, so if anyone out there wants to learn more about you, hire you, anything pertaining to your world, where is the best place to go? Well, if you can spell my name, you will find me. That's the easiest. Anthony Lassina. If you spell that name, you will find me. I'm mostly on LinkedIn when it comes to my, my profession. This is where I share my... This is where I share my uh, you know, insights a couple of times per week, three or four times per week when it comes to communication and motivation and leadership and so on. And also anthonylassenai.com where you can even watch full length keynotes and, and things like that around me and get some downloadable materials and all that. So those are the two main. And also you, the contact details are in that webpage as well. So that's the easiest one. Excellent. Anthony, this has been great, man. Thank you so much for opening up. Thank you for, for kind of giving us an insight into your world. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so much, Joe. It was so fun. Absolutely. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.